and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. Henda, varimi ni, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise, round of applause for the OG of YouTube. <laughs> What's happening, Sibum Panza? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to be here. Um, mm-hmm. I've been I've been watching what you've been doing, and I've just been waiting for my turn. I'm glad my turn has finally come. I was so shocked when you told me that you watched the channel. I'm like, Literally. yes, you'd be shocked to watch you, us, eh? You'll always be shocked at who sees your stuff. Um, but also, if you make yourself visible, then just expect it, man. And I gotta thank you because without you, none of this would be possible, dude. But you're I, like a trailblazer, I don't my know nigga. What you're talking about? <laughs> No clue what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, you know what? Jeez, uh, I got so many questions I want to ask you. I've got the time. Let's get straight into the shits, man. Yeah. How's your bank account looking right now? <laughs> <laughs> Standard procedure. <laughs> hey, you know what? It was touch and go in, in, in April. They got us in the first half, but yeah. uh, the May's looking promising. Yeah. May's looking promising, yeah. But yeah. on a serious note, I got to <laughs> say, dude, your intro is probably one of the best <laughs> intros on YouTube, hands down, dude. We worked hard on it. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Def did pay uh, royalties for rigorous, um, rigorous. No, he, um, so, so while I was at uh, YFM, um, I, DJ Zandi, one of the DJs at Y, it's yeah. his song with reason. So I'm just like, Zandi, I'm looking to like uh, rebrand a little bit. I, I need a song for a title sequence I'm creating. He was like, go ahead, dude. Um, cool guy, Zandi. If, eh? if, dude, yeah. If, he was like, if anything, um, you'll just promo it like a little bit more for us. We thought it was going to be a little bit more. The views on his and the downloads oh. um, of that song after the, the title sequence came out was like huge. Um, so they were very happy to give it to me, um, which is pretty cool. And hopefully they've gotten a return on investment on it. Yeah. What's the biggest paycheck you've received from your channel? <sighs> biggest paycheck. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, I'm going to make it very like from one side to the other. Not more than 200 grand. What? <laughs> Not more than 200. One campaign. Um, it was the car deal with Suzuki. Wow. Yeah. Dude, how does that happen, dude? I don't know, dude. It's, 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 it's just a mixture of, I, I think, I've been doing YouTube for four years. Mm. It was a matter of creating the content and being ready for when the opportunity presents itself. And um, it was a very long process with Suzuki where... They asked me to, the, the agency asked me to uh, pitch to them in like early last year, like Feb. And then there was a whole process about it. I think there was many of us YouTubers. And at the end, they chose, I think, like seven influencers. Um, and then, yeah, we did a, a, f- a four or five month campaign with them, creating videos with them, creating content. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think when, when they gave me the brief, they were like, Come up with your biggest ideas. Yeah. Don't think about money. Go crazy. Don't think about they were like just go just just go crazy. And I was like, okay, cool. Um came up with the idea. I remember I told my girlfriend, I was like, I'm not gonna ask for this money. Like, this is wild. When I calculated everything I created, and she was like, That's how much you cost, that's how much you create. And then I was like, Okay, cool. I sent it. They came back, they were like, Okay, shop, shop, let's do it. Um and and that's how it happened. And then at the end of the campaign, they were so happy that they were just like, You can have one of the cars, which was a nice cherry on top yeah. I gotta say I hate you I hate you uh, YouTube creators man Why? Cause you guys make it look so easy <laughs> <laughs> This shit looks so easy Until yeah. you get into it Then you're like tough, Wow tough. this is tough it's man tough. It's not really tough But it's hard work mm, mm, You know yeah. what I mean Cause I was telling you Of A mm. Like there was a, The previous episode I did Episode 55 yeah. It literally took me 24 hours To edit that video Cause yeah. I do everything yeah, yeah And the only problem was that I couldn't sync the video to the sound To the sound mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. something was wrong But it took mm-hmm. me 24 hours Just That's to get thing. that right Everything just When things go wrong They don't go It's not one thing That goes wrong Like me two days ago I'm doing this thing right now Where I'm uploading a video Every single day And this one day Just like my computer Wouldn't process the footage And then when I did edit it It wouldn't export Because it wasn't <laughs> rendering pro- Then when I did my in- The power went out So I couldn't upload And I was just like You know what yeah. Today's just not the day Today It'd be like that sometimes That's my phrase um, and I was just like, I'll try again tomorrow. But it is tough. It's difficult. How's your process? Because mm. I shoot everything. Mm-hmm. I edit my own stuff and upload my own stuff, which takes about four hours yep. to upload. <laughs> People don't know that. They're like, yo, can you record every day? I'm like, yeah. do you know it's the rough. admin it's behind rough. the scenes? Yeah. Yeah. What's your process? My, I've, I've pretty much been doing that too. Um, for the past four years, it's, it's mostly been uh, myself. I've, I've, I, had a, I had a producer in 2016, 17. It was a student. Her name was Gwen and she was really keen on helping me out learning the ropes and also she was just way more organized than me um we were friends first and then she was like you ain't organized for shit (laughs) so um she kind of helped me especially because i was at varsity too at that time and i was juggling a lot um recently what's happened is 
I just have like this gang of YouTubers that helps me out quite a bit. So we help each other. So myself and Okdm, um, OK Wasabi, like right now. George helped me film something and then Menzi's editing it. Oh. Um, so, like, we help each other out when we can. Yo, can I use your camera? Can I use that? Can I use you next week, Saturday, or whatever the case may be? So, I think we've realized that we've gotten to the point where we're so busy, we have to help each other out. Otherwise, it's going to be a, a, like we won't be able to carry on the way we're going now, especially having multiple youtube channels or like somebody like an arcadium has multiple shows on his youtube channel it's it's a lot to handle i need to get be a part of that squad man it sounds like <laughs> the, the a team <laughs> we, <are sure. laughs> we don't subscribe <laughs> uh you mentioned you got three channels why did yeah. why do you have three channels so okay so my first channel was like an individual channel it was a sit down talking to the camera just like this um i really enjoyed doing that stuff and it got to a point where people were like yo Sibu, we want to see behind the scenes because i just moved to joburg also we want to see behind the scenes we want to see what you get up to how you're getting money um how you might maybe not getting money like what are the struggles mm. um of being an entrepreneur especially like with the whole story of having dropped out of varsity and moved straight to joburg um, yeah. every everybody was really interested and so they asked me to create behind the scenes footage i didn't want to clog up my main channel so i set up a vlog channel yeah um set up a vlog channel to just be able to put that kind of content out um yeah and then Please I turn up that. his mic there. This one, yeah. it so- maybe it's just me. Must yeah. I bring it closer? Is no, 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 it's fine. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Yeah, I just want. Oh, I just want people to hear you. Must be no yeah, that one. Yeah. No, no, put it up. Yeah, yeah. Carry on as okay. you are. Mm. So, um, yeah. So I wanted to put a lot of the. I wanted to put a lot of the footage on Sibum Banza, but I was scared of clogging up the channel. So I started Mom Banza, mm-hmm. which basically had all the behind the scenes footage of my life. Um, and then it's it's and then when I brought my girlfriend on, it just boomed even more, um, and people really liked that type of content. So then I had more Banza. Then last year I had the idea of starting a tech channel. Yeah. Um, I really, really well. I wanted to start a gaming channel because um, I felt like there was the opportunity there, and a lot of uh, black people in South Africa love gaming. They yeah. love gaming, yeah. but nobody talks about it. Yeah, I love gaming um, exactly, oh, man. but nobody talks about it. Um, at least creating content, you'll see people when I'm when I tweet about games, people be like, "Yo, I played that. How did you feel?" And I'm like, "Where have you guys been?" This did you start time. gaming? Exactly. When did I start gaming? Yeah. I think I got my PlayStation 2 in like 05. Do you know Half-Life? Yes, I do. Dude. Yeah, that's my Life. shit. That's my shit. That's an old game, bro. I was playing Half-Life. Um, on the, we had a gaming uh, society at school. Yeah. And we're playing Half-Life. Um, Diablo. Don Diablo. Diablo. Dude, yeah, listen. That's my shit. We were all on it. So I was like, last year I was like, okay, I really want to start a gaming channel, even though it's a lot of work. And then I spoke to George about it, and he was like, dude, I've also been wanting to do, like, gaming and tech. And I was like, come, let's do it. Let's create Arcade. Um, and then Arcade happened, and now we're doing gaming and tech, which is going pretty well. It's about a month and a half old, and people are really resonating with it. I think it's also because it's young black people mm-hmm. talking about it. A lot of the tech, a lot of the gaming channels are from a very white lens in the whole world and in South Africa. Um, so we just wanted to switch that up a bit, have some vernac while talking about tech. Um it sounds cool. People are really enjoying it. And now the brands are coming slowly but surely. Nice. Uh, trying man. to get those tech brands, those gaming brands to. You know what's crazy believe. is that people think the more subscribers you have, the more money you make. But actually, that's not the truth. Because yeah. I was speaking to a guy. Mm. He literally has like 3,000 subscribers. Mm-hmm. He does a cryptocurrency channel. Mm-hmm. And he makes so much money. You he's like make? on a yeah. bad month, he makes about 20K a month. Mm-hmm. You know, And he's got 3,000 subscribers. Yeah. I was yeah. like, how the fuck do you do that? <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. all about finding your niche, I guess. Exactly. It's about it's about figuring out who you are um, and also just understanding your own value. I've spoken to people who have three times the subscribers I have who are making three, like, oh, where I'm making three times the money they're wow. making. Because I'd rather be you. <laughs> why people, people don't know their value. People mm. are too scared to ask for the money that they deserve. Um, and then even when they ask for it, these agencies and the brands will be like, nah, we'll pay you like this much and then we'll keep you on our books for future campaigns. I'm like, nah, you're paying me this much now. And then if you're working on future campaigns, that's what we're doing. So it's a, it's a matter of sticking to your guns. And, and with that being said, it's a very privileged thing to say because some people can't stick to their guns. They need yeah. to pay rent yeah. like this, this month it needs to happen. Um, but I found that sticking to my guns has helped me more than anything else. I've had broke months because I've stuck to my guns. But when the money does come in, the money's good. Yeah. The money's good. Yeah. And which uh, YouTubers do you look up to? 
Let's start with locally. Which which local YouTubers? I mean, obviously my friends. Like yo, I, that's why I work with them in the first place. Okay, Wasabi, um, and Arcadium, uh, Pop Culture, Pop Culture, and I've been doing YouTube for like four or five years right now. Michelin Damase, killing the game. Um, there's a makeup YouTuber her name is Tandy Gama. She just bought the wildest camera, and I just I, I love that because you can tell she's been saving up for it for a while, and she decided to put her money back into herself and i respect that because it's very difficult when you make money you just be like ah i want to spend this money it's very difficult to be like okay i've made uh, 20 grand i'm gonna go buy something for like my business yeah. and not for invest back in exactly the business investing yeah. back in your business so i really look up to uh, those youtubers man there's so many more um and i think i think internationally for me right now I'm i bet you're gonna say podcast and chill but anyway i mean no definitely <laughs> i look up to you guys because i'm like this stuff is dumb. so many people are like Sibu start a podcast I'm like guys you know how difficult it is to have a podcast that stuff is not easy I respect people who have podcasts I'm not playing those games for a while yeah. I tell people if I make a podcast either the second half of the year or next year yeah. I need time to research uh-huh. understanding how difficult it is understanding how it works because I'm not jumping into other people's industries without knowing my shit already true, yeah true. Um, so definitely people with podcasts mm-mm. you're gonna teach me how to do this I <laughs> what also do you your stuff is expensive that's another whole thing you <laughs> not know, even my uh, dog. Uh, dog no way uh, give yeah. me three things because like um, mm. I was saying in the previous episode that uh, having a YouTube channel The way I see it In like three years time Or two years time Everybody's going to have a channel Yeah It's going to be like That whole BBM thing What's exactly. your BBM thing? What's pin? your BBM thing? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Uh, everybody's starting channels yeah. now yeah. And you like the trailblazer The OG The face of YouTube And whatever <laughs> Give me three things That you think South African YouTubers Get wrong Three things they get wrong Um I think I think the one thing Is a lot of people So this is for the people Who are thinking of starting Is yeah. Is People are people are trying to be perfect. People are trying to upload that first podcast, that first video, and thinking it's going to run smoothly. Oh, my first video was terrible. That's shocking. That's how shocking. I always tell people: uh, don't be afraid to suck. You're going to suck in the beginning, dude. It's fine. Like that's. I think that's one of the best things for me about digital content creation is because you can see how much a person sucked and how much better they are Growth. now. Exactly. Yeah. You can see the. If you watch my first video, <laughs> oh, oh, how was it, boy? It was. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's easily. I don't think it's the worst thing I've ever made because I've made worse even after that. But yeah. it's bad. Yeah. But that's the whole point: is you're supposed to have things that are bad so that you can see growth. You're not going to come into this being perfect, no matter how much research you think you can do. I can read all the articles about how to start a podcast. It's not all all of a sudden going to make my first podcast the best. So I think the the one thing is. Don't be scared to start. Um, don't, like a lot of people want to be perfect, you're not going to be perfect the first time. Another thing I'd say they get wrong. Um, which is also a difficult thing is just coming into it for the money. It's a long term game. Yeah. It is a long term game and it is it is if you're coming in for the money you're not going to be satisfied. You have to do this cuz you just enjoy it. You have to do it cuz you either like talking to the camera, having a community, you like presenting. I'm um, like 8 months in the game. I'm like where's yeah. the money? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I always tell people this For me it took me Three years to get My first paycheck My yeah. first rand wow. Took three years Of YouTube yeah. um, And it's paid off But just don't come Into it for that Because it's such A slow game It takes you a while And also brands Are waiting to see Whether you've been Consistent for mm. a year Um like how many views are you getting and it takes a while to cultivate that and the biggest thing is the community yeah. cultivating a community takes time um, and that's what brands are looking for they're looking for people who have communities third biggest mistake South African creators are making um, I would say it's listening to the noise a bit too much. Ah. There's so many people on Twitter who have all these opinions about how YouTube videos should be made, mm. how podcasts should be made. They aren't doing jack. Yeah. Um, and as much as, you know what, I appreciate people, but a lot of people don't come with the critis- criticism in a constructive way. Yeah. Um, I think that's one thing people on social media struggle with. I, I don't have a problem with you giving me advice. Um, it's just the way you say it, the way you speak about it. Um, and I think a lot of YouTubers, a lot of creators are taking... Uh, what people on social media say to heart yeah. quite a lot um, and it's something that I'm also still figuring out like dog every day and, and, and I, I put my name on my YouTube videos in my titles because I want to be able to search and see who's sharing my videos okay. who my community is and sometimes when I search my name I see other things and the way people and people are talking about it people are talking about me every single day and some things are nice a lot of things are trash and I have to understand that the positive outweighs the negative. Otherwise, I'll never carry on with my YouTube channel. I do you care what along. people think about you? A hundred percent. You I do? do? I do. Without a, without a doubt. I care what people... Th- um, so I if I say you're trash, you're going to take it personally? I'm going to... So, so that's the thing. I care what people think. 
Um, but it's a, it's it's also a matter of how far I let that black ah. go. If Max says, "Yo, Cebu, like your stuff is trash," I'm like, "Okay, you know my Firstly, name." <laughs> <laughs> he knows Max my doesn't name. know Max been famous <laughs> for a long, long time. <laughs> um, so, so like, I'll, I'll, I'll take it and I'll listen to it and be like, okay, firstly, why does Mac think these videos are trash? If you have no reasoning, then it's it's like there's no reason for me to yeah. even take what you're saying. But a lot of people say it's trash from a certain place. Um, and it's finding out why you have those opinions and then seeing whether I'm actually going to take it in or not. Because yeah. some reasons are valid. Some reasons are very, It's very things valid. that you probably were not aware of. Exactly. It's yeah. just that people, like I said, don't have a mm. way. They don't know how to speak. And it's the biggest, biggest issue is... is um, a lot of people have very good ideas for what you can do to make yourself better. It's just the way that it comes they across. Bring the, yeah. Those ideas across. Yeah. Are there YouTubers like? Is there beef? Because I know you had beef with. Uh, is Ish. it Ronaldo? Um. Yeah, man. Uh. A hundred percent. They mm. are. They are definitely. No way. They are de- <laughs> definitely YouTube beef, and a lot of it is 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 under the cover. People yeah. Get very excited, and I think the people who beef the most are makeup YouTubers. I love it so much. Um. There's YouTube beef. There's, there's, there's a hundred percent YouTube beef. I think. And how do you guys battle? Like, is my subscribers are no. more than yours? <laughs> no, it's weird though because it's always like uh, things that don't really matter, like little minute Frivolous things. things. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think I had one of one of the biggest because it was it was. I think I think it's safe to say I've had the biggest. I'm not proud of it. Yeah. Um, back in 2017 with this Ronaldo guy, um, and now he's like a whole. I think I don't think he's a member of parliament, but he's a he's like um. He's something in Nelson Mandela Bay wow. to do with the DA. Wow. Racist you can't go hell, there. But, oh my you goodness. can't go there anytime yeah, soon. Dude. So, so I think there is YouTube beef. A lot of it is just under the rug. People don't know about it. Us within YouTube might realize that these two people don't necessarily like each other. Um, but on the other side of the coin, a lot of our community members like to assume there's beef where there isn't. Ah. I always get asked, Sibu, why aren't you hanging out with this person as much anymore? And I'm just like, that's just what happens. Mm. Um, if somebody had to analyze your life every single time you hung out with someone, Somebody less and less it's annoying dude i get the same question so right now um my vlog channels with my girlfriend quite a lot more and then uh, my friend george his he has a, a couple channel with his girlfriend and then there's another couple channel called zuki and garabo george and i have a channel together so obviously we're going to hang out more because we need to work oh together. stop man this sounds like days of our lives <laughs> dude listen <laughs> and I, every single video where i am vlogging for my second channel and i'm vlogging george and i and george uh, and his girlfriend and my girlfriend people are like why aren't you guys vlogging with zuki and Karabo? Yeah. like why aren't you guys i'm like because we just there's no reason for us to see each other as much as george and i see each other and people are like no you hate them you don't like them because of this much and this and i'm just like People trying to create stuff because it just makes it more exciting. I understand. I yeah. understand. It makes it exciting. Um, but it's also unnecessary. Have yeah. you ever gotten laid from YouTube? <laughs> I um I will come not, with it. Come I will with it. Not confirm or deny. I'm, ah, in, a very, come on, I'm in a very happy, committed relationship. No, before. Before. Um before. No, no, no. I know you're talking about before, but I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not jumping into that. That's a messy, messy thing to jump into. But I will I'll take say that as that, a yes. I will say that uh it it it's People are more attentive towards you. Um, <laughs> pe- people are definitely more te- attentive, and and uh, yeah, you just you just get more you get you get way more attention as soon as you get a little bit of clout. Yeah. Um, but it's just a matter of what you do with it. Yeah. And I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, I want to talk about you as a person shortly. But last question about YouTube is: um, What do you hate the most about being a YouTube star? What do I hate the most? Um, People will be very surprised, but the attention that comes with it—it's yeah. like it's a, it's a byproduct. Um, and I, and before I used to be like, I don't understand why people don't like being famous. And and at no point do I think I'm famous, but the little bit of Fame. attention that mm. I get is already wild to me. I'm I've got like on all the channels maybe thirty or thirty five thousand subscribers, and to me already I'm like enough. Mm. Um, I can't imagine having a hundred thousand subscribers. I can't imagine. Being more like well known than I am now, go to Rose. Did Bank you see more. AK's tweets? Which like, ones? No, he's blocked me, so definitely not. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Max Fix. laughs> no, definitely, I've been blocked by a few people. Um, but like, I, I already it's just it's a lot. Like going to the club and having people just like pull you to be like, oh my god, hey, it's like, can't you tap me on the shoulder or something? Yeah. Um, I'll be like eating at a restaurant and people will come up and and I appreciate it a lot most of the time. Um, it's just that there's a time and place. Like yeah. sometimes there's just a time and place. And also people say very weird things where 
when you're very visible with your partner, um, the comments people make, uh, it, it's half of it is like funny jokes. The other half is trying to rile you up. Um, I've been to clubs in Joburg where people are like, oh, you're that new YouTube nigga. Like, yo, <laughs> so again, I like your girl. That's that. We gonna get your girl. And I'm like, what? What's going? Wait, what do you mean? What? I just walked into the club, and yeah. and sometimes um, people are just weird, man. Even even with my partner, people will. Uh, recently, somebody at a club said to my, my girlfriend was speaking to one of our friends. Yeah. Um, and they were like speaking very, very closely because the club is loud. Um, and somebody looked at my girlfriend and was like, "Don't worry, what happens here stays here." What the fuck? I'm Which not, clubs are you going to, bro? Not, Shit. It's, it's these. No, I'm not going to say the name, but everybody knows. Like, it's it's one of the the you but know more you, well known ones. With yeah. you and your girl, when you guys, if you do break up, what's mm. going to happen to the channel? It's my channel. Ah, it's more Banza ah. that I brought. So it's not a couple channels. So you'll just get a new girl. Sorry? You'll just get a new girl. No, I, I never that. Hopefully we'll never ever break out Jeepers. That'll be that'll be catastrophic. But weirdly enough, a lot of people are waiting for that, man. Abandu Bakosha again on these streets. Um, but no, we won't. That's why also I am um I, I'm helping her with her own channel so uh, that I mean, worst case scenario we do break up. Um I also want her to have something um, that she's taken away. Um, yeah, I got a question from some subscribers, some oh, of my no. subscribers. Oh, um, no. Jackson Dong says, "What's his take on Tati Westbrook and James Charles fallout? Uh, considering that he's also in that space, and um, we saw James Charles losing over three million subscribers and counting because of cancel culture, and that has never happened before in the history of YouTube. I have no idea what this guy's talking about." So. Um, basically, James. Char- oh, this is such a lot. Okay, short version. James Charles is a white young YouTuber. I think he's a teenager, maybe twenty years old, right? Um, he does uh, makeup YouTube. Yeah. Tati is a, a older woman who also does makeup, as far as I know. Okay. She helped him on his come up. He's way bigger than na- okay. than her now, but like she's still she's huge. Um, and she helped him. She plugged him everywhere she okay. went in it, like a lot of videos that she made um and now what james did is he worked with a supplement like a vitamin brand mm. knowing that she works with a vitamin oh. brand right so now she's angry she's like this man's a traitor but then also now she brings up other things the fact that um he he tries to uh sexually apparently he tries to like uh have sex with straight men and there's just a whole lot going on but basically she put him on blast and now he's losing a lot of subscribers because a lot of people stand her um, and they understand that he's come up a lot of it came from her um but there's also the thing of he's been racist since day one there was a time when he was at he was in high school and he was coming to his trip to south africa when the ebola thing was happening in the world he was like yo i'm going to south africa i hope i don't get ebola like he's been racist since 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 um but a lot of people like you know what he's a high school kid he's learning um but now people are canceling him. So I think my only, I, I don't have a, a thought about them and their brands and their friendship, but it's very weird how everybody's up in arms now when it comes to branded things, um, like a branded beef. But when he was racist, everybody was like, ah, it's fine, man. Yeah. It's, uh, we'll act like we don't see it. That's all. That's right. all. Um, are brands taking South African YouTubers seriously compared to the USA in terms of payment? Uh, definitely. N- compared to, no. But I think they are taking us more seriously than they've ever had. Because um, it's uncharted territory. Exactly, Nobody knows. Exactly. Nobody knows how to go about it. Um, everybody's trying to act like they know in a, in a way, which is also another like weird part of it. Uh, they're not taking us as seriously as Americans are. Otherwise, we'd all be making way more money. Mm. But compared to when I started, yeah. they're taking us very, very seriously. Nice. Um, they understand what's at stake. They understand the value of us. Um, and I just think we also need to take ourselves seriously for them too. Uh, K6M2 says, how do you feel about these gay rumors? Oh, the gay rumors. I don't, I don't really mind. Um, people ask me about my sexuality all the time. People are like, are you gay? Are you straight? And at the end of the day, I'm always like, it doesn't actually matter. Yeah, because um, you're still Sibu at the end I'm of the day. Sibu. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I understand that people want to box me in and classify me because some things I do make people think, okay, no, he's definitely gay. Some things I do are like, oh, no, he's straight. Um, but nobody has the actual answer. Um, and I'd like to keep it that way because at the end of the day, my whole idea is that it doesn't actually matter. Yeah, because I mean, if you are gay, who cares? Who cares? He's still yeah, delivering still, good content. You know what I mean? That's the thing. That's you know, no thing. one is spreading rumors about you loving pussy. You know it's what I mean? A, there we go. <laughs> there we go. That's, all, that's I'm going to end there. <laughs> <laughs> Nyaniso mm. says, uh, what do you know now that you wish you knew when you started? When I started YouTube? Mm. Um, 
Damn, I wish I knew that I was going to be successful. Yeah. I won't lie. I, I don't. I, I didn't come into it thinking I was going to become some big YouTuber. I mean, I definitely had dreams of it, but I didn't really believe them. It was all just talk. Mm. Like, there was nothing behind it. Um, and if you told 19 year old Sibu at UCT, drowning in varsity, um, like drowning in varsity work, that he was going to be some well known South African, uh, like, digital entrepreneur i would have been like that's wild there's there's no way um so i i i wish i was more confident in myself from day one i think that would have made a big difference yeah um yeah that's that's the biggest one what kind of a kid were you in like high school were you introvert extrovert um, i i so i was a, i was i think i was definitely an introvert um i was on the quieter side i was a musician in high school like that You're was musician. my yeah that was that was what i i loved to do i was a like percussionist rap. Oh, no 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 like yeah. a like a classical music oh, and jazz nice. music kind of thing um that's where i would sort of come out of my shell when it had to do with music um I think that was the only time. Otherwise, people are always surprised. I tell them, I was that kid at school where you always surprised, came to the next grade with you. Like, I was scraping through school, dog. The first time I got 50% for every, like, over 50% for everything was matric finals. Wow. My whole high school career, I was just like, I was a slacker from day one. Um, we never, never bullied. Enjoyed. Was I bullied? Primary school, more than anything. I wouldn't say high school necessarily, like here and there. Um, but other than that, people just stayed out of my way and I stayed out of people's way. So where just, does your anxiety come from? Mine's, I don't know where my anxiety comes from and, and it got like worse When I was out of school actually mm. I think school was a nice shell for me I knew what I was doing I, There was a path Got to varsity And everybody was Everybody seemed to know What they were doing With their lives And I was like All I know is that I hate the shit Like that's all I know mm. um, And I think there was anxiety About not knowing Where I was going to go Even when I started My YouTube channel Didn't think that was Going to be my job I was still like What am I doing with my life Everybody mm. knew what they were doing Everybody was passing varsity So I think that's where The anxiety started And then when I left Varsity, like my anxiety came all the way down. But then the depression came out wow. um, because I was broke. Like I was broke. When I moved to Joburg my first year, it was not cute. Um, I was borrowing money from friends, borrowing money from friends as parents, like to pay rent. Um, and I think just being broke, like made my d uh, depression flare up, like really, really badly. Nothing worse um, than being famous and broke. Because everybody thinks you have money It's so weird Everybody thinks you have money And then like 20, Weirdly enough 2018 came And I made Like way more money Than I've ever made My depression sort of Got better Because I didn't have to Worry so much But then my anxiety Shot up Because I was working All the time All day Every single day Like two jobs um, Working for multiple brands All by myself So it was it was really, really difficult. Do you get time to enjoy? Okay, so you made uh, 200k from Suzuki. Do you get time to enjoy? <laughs> I didn't enjoy say it? I made 200k. <laughs> I said it was not over 200. It was between 100 and 200. I'll leave it. So it could be 101, guys. Could be 101 rand. Uh, <laughs> do you enjoy that 101 rand? Oh, I enjoy it. Um, I, I definitely do. Because um, you strike me when I listen to you, right? Mm. Uh, I think, were you a geek in, in high school? Was I a geek? I, I'd say it, it depends what you mean by geek. But if we're talking like a music geek, mm -hmm. I was always in like the music hall. Well, um, okay. Like in my generation, a geek would be someone who'd like go home and play um, Half-Life, th Magic me. Cards. That's me. Okay. That's me. Through and through. Ooh, like that, I, was my, that was my life, dog. You know what that I mean? That was my life, yeah. And, yeah. and, and that's how I think you landed up onto this YouTube space mm. thing. Because you knew YouTube before we even knew what YouTube yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, because when you're in that space, you're inquisitive, you know? 100%. And um, it comes across when I watch... Um, the older stuff. The older stuff and whatever. But, like, you strike me as someone who's very introverted. Mm -hmm. But when you're in front of the mic, it's like you playing that percussion. That's... <laughs> You know who I am. Um, that's the thing. So, so a lot of people and say that. And it just that happens that 30,000 people get to watch get it. To, exactly. So I, I feel like I'm in my element. I'm a very shy person, but I've performed in front of thousands of people like music. Mm. So I, I, I have my place. I know when it's time for Sibu Mbanza to come out and not Sibu. Sibu's the guy who chills at home and like, likes to be at home, uh, plays PlayStation, watches like tech reviews in his, in his lounge by himself. Yeah. But then when Sibu Mbanza comes out, he comes out. It's time to work. It's time to do what I love to do. Um, so I have those like two, two different things, but it's exactly like that. It, it, it reminds me of my time doing music in high school where I was super shy, but give me two drumsticks and put me in front of a drum kit and then I just come out of my shell. Do you have any insecurities? Would you again? <laughs> I'm a person. I'm a human being. Um, no, definitely. I, I, I do have insecurities. I, I think I, to this day. The word pioneer trailblazer scares the shit out of me. For real. Um, because I, it, there's so much pressure with it where 
people are always trying to see what is Sibu gonna do next because uh Sibu is one of the benchmarks of, of ah, like being a successful all YouTuber. eyes on you all eyes on me where and it's um, lonely at the top bro <laughs> I don't think I'm alone, <laughs> um, but but it, it is like like uh, 2017. I, I got the I was in the Mail and Guardian top 200 with pop culture, and people were like, "A YouTuber mm. in like the Mail and Guardian for for film and media, mm. not for anything else for film and media." I was in the Mail and Guardian top 200. People were like that's wild. Uh, 2018 came, uh, getting getting a, a a car from Suzuki, getting a gig at YFM. People were like, "What? Mm. Okay, this is dope." Major radio station um, brands like him in, in enough to want to carry on working with him um so that's now he's taking it to another level so people are like 2019 what the hell is we're gonna do like he has to do, and i'm like i don't know what i'm gonna do like i just take it day by day and if something happens something happens so i think i still have major imposter syndrome like i sit at home and i'm like when are people gonna realize that i'm winging all of this <laughs> like <laughs> i'm so scared for the day when people are like this nigga doesn't know what he's doing yeah, um yeah. So I, I still think I struggle with that uh, quite a bit. So I have to actively tell myself all the time that, no, you know what you're doing. You're not here um, just by chance. Like, you you put yourself here. Yeah. And were you getting ass when you were in high school? Was I... I broke my virginity when I was in varsity. Ah, I saw your leg bloom. I, I, yeah. Like a true geek. I, like a true... <laughs> I was in varsity... <laughs> I broke my virginity in varsity. I'll be honest with you. If it wasn't for YFM, I think I would have been like you. <laughs> YFM put me on... <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, yep, yep, yep. This certain job that will definitely. Uh, do you still remember you. your first time though? Do I still remember your first time? Of course I do. Yeah, I remember my first time like it was uh, yesterday. Because you got anxiety. Were you nervous? Did you want it to be perfect? I, I, so funny enough, I wasn't nervous. Um, I, I, I think I, I was with my partner for quite a long time, and we sort of understood each other, and we both knew that we were doing it like for the first time. So it was a matter of together. Yo, yeah, together. Oh, so it nice. was like, okay, dog, it's time. And she was like, okay, it's time. Let's get it. Um, let's just let's do this thing. <laughs> and then halfway. It was like it was like a fun thing, so because it wasn't like a random person, like we 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 were laughing at the same time. Like, what the hell are we doing? Like, yeah. is it supposed to be like this? Okay, no, it's definitely supposed to be like this. I understand why people are crying about this thing. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, no, it was. It, I think I was lucky enough to have done it with somebody that I I'd known for a while, so it was very comfortable. Yeah. And are you into like orgies? Um, no, no, I I don't think I'd be into an orgy. I because you come from a Christian background. So. I do come from a Christ- a very Christian background. Um, mm. orgies not necessarily. Um, I think if I were ever to, no, no, not even. Just the thought of it is like ugh, sending shivers down. What my about spine. drugs? Have you seen like people do drugs? I haven't. I'm so. Ma- I mean, <laughs> not that like I wanna, but like I haven't seen. People always talk about Joburg. People are always like just <laughs> hop it. And I've never seen. I'm. I've been in Joburg for two years, dog, and I haven't seen people taking hard drugs. I'm glad, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That I'm around people who don't, but like yeah. I've been to the club a couple of times. I've never seen somebody coming back going, "How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing?" Um, so I think I'm hanging out in the in the wrong but right circles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool, man. So listen, are you big on current affairs? So I got a few mm. topics I'm going to ask you, and I just oh, want you to snap. tell me the first thing. First thing, okay. uh, radio that comes to mind. Radio. Yeah. Um, sucks in South Africa. We could do so much. Nah. Better. Yeah. Terrible. Nah. Terrible. But you were a part of the sucking. I was a part of the sucking. Um, and and I think I, I tried my best while I was there. And I think as a community, as the people who were there, we did do better. Um, not because I was there, but during the time that I was there, I saw like things getting better. Um, but I think overall as a community, radio is in the pits. I think we have good presenters. Yeah. I think us as content producers, we're terrible. Yeah, I, I think just think we have good um, people, but we're terrible. radio lives, needs to adapt with the times. Yeah. You understand? I mm. mean, it'll never go away because it's free. Yeah. So people yeah. always listen to radio, mm. but I think mm. it needs to move with the times. You it know? needs to. I, I think something I realized um, ac- across the board, and also obviously while I was at the radio station that I was at, is is I wish South African radio would, like you're saying, would not just stick in traditional. There's mm. so much digital content to yeah. be created yeah. to supplement what you're already doing. And yep. I feel like we're sleeping on it. As an extension. As an extension, exactly. Um, I don't know if we're lazy or if we just don't want to... Um, do things that make us uncomfortable? No, it's because the people at the top, mm. the guys who are running the industry, mm. they're old school. Yeah. So they're not privy mm. to this knowledge mm. that we have. Exactly. They don't know, like, yeah. what, you know, like, they probably don't know what Instagram Live is. Exactly. You understand can what I'm you, saying? Can you imagine if there was a... a, a like Asibu a, Mpanza running a YFM. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Do you know how little it be? <laughs> That's what I, I just, I just want... 
more. Like, there's so much content at a place like a radio station. There's so much you can... Just having a YouTube channel, right? Where you run it in a way where you, you follow your DJs around, you follow your content producers around. Everybody wants to be on radio. They're so wet. While I was there, I used to get emails every single day. Sibu, how can I also get there? And... and they, these kids are looking for content about how to be on radio. When I was at UCT, I was creating content about how you're on, like how to live on campus. Yeah. Um, and so many people watched that. High school students watched it because they wanted to understand how to get in and also what happens when you're in. Imagine if a radio station showed us what happened when you're inside. Ooh. So many more people would Ooh. be keen to just yeah. watch that. Yeah. Uh, what happened with YFM? What happened with YFM? Um, the contract ended. Um, they, I, I don't think they were particularly uh, happy with where our show was going. Mm. Um, I don't think it it flowed with the rest of like the day. Mm. Um, I think there's there's a there's there is a current affairs element. I mean that there has to be at yeah. a radio station. I think we might have been going a bit too hard for the station. Mm. Um, in so terms you were of, too boring. We were. I I, th- I think that just might have been it for. <laughs> for I don't think it was necessarily it for uh, the li- the listeners per se because people yeah. were getting people would call us and just getting into it. Mm. But I think the higher ups. Um, that's not what they wanted from an evening show. They didn't want people who are talking about patriarchy, who are talking mm. about men are trash, um, who are talking about like abortion rates, and who are talking about like how um, we need to normalize menstruation. So like we, we were talk- we were going deep. And was that is radio something that you wanted to do, or just fell in your lap? Radio is something that I actually did at Varsity. Oh, um, okay. it was the it was my like big society. Hey, varsity thing that radio I did. is varsity. the shit, man. <laughs> listen, hey, listen. Don't leave me hanging. Um, There's your glasses. There, 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 there we are. There we are. Actually, I'm playing myself but <laughs> for real though like varsity varsity is where thank you varsity is where i started uh, yeah. radio funny enough uh, carissa the woman i was with um, yeah. my host she taught me at uct radio yeah and we end up working together here in joburg at at y um i don't even i don't even know all right next topic know, let me leave uh, it there. game of thrones Game of Thrones, oh, I'm so mad. One of my favorite, top two favorite series, it's ending terribly. Is number one Breaking Bad? Uh, no. People are going to be mad at me when I say this. Uh, Grey's Anatomy. What? I'm, a, I'm just a, I'm, I'm a nigga. See, now you're, f- you're fueling rumors. <laughs> you're fueling rumors. See what, see what I'm doing? <laughs> Confuse the enemy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I don't mm-hmm. know. Like a lot of people that are watching Game of Thrones are mm-hmm. not happy with the season. I, 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 I don't like it. I, I don't see a I love with the it. way it looks. Yeah. I just don't like the way it's ending. And I haven't had a lot of opinions before, but there's just I, I had this idea of what was going to happen and I feel like they're ruining the, the endings of the if this was in the middle of a season, I'd be like, Oh shit, okay, maybe yeah. I didn't expect this. Because there's one more season left, no? I mean no, one, more, one more one, one more episode. episode. Dude, one episode. Oh, I'm gonna be so and the sad. way people have been dying, it's just like it's not satisfactory. So that's my thing. I've had people who I love die and I'm like, damn, that's sad. But it's like a satisfactory ending. Um, I think where they lost it, they try to cram too many things. That's it. That's, that was my thing. And apparently there's some people who did. The showrunners don't want to carry on. Um, but apparently the network would love more uh, seasons. But the guys, would are love like, more, bro. the guys are like, enough is enough now. Yeah. Um, so obviously they just like, oh shit. We only, they were like, we only have two seasons left. So we have to cram everything and. Obviously, season seven, they, they moved very slowly. So now, in the um, last season... Don't tell me you read the books, because that's a very geeky thing I to do. I read the first book. Oh. I read the first book. Oh. <laughs> After I watched it, I was like, let me go see. Because people were like, there's a big difference in the book. Than the, and I read it, and I was like, okay, there's a slight... The books are a little bit better. All right, religion. Mm. I know you spoke about it in your channel. Um, religion. I respect the people who do. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't think I can be part of. I don't think I can be part of that. I can't. I can't out. I can't not look at the bad that it's brought in and be like, you know what? There's some positives. Mm. Um, I think people should stay away from the idea of religion and just be like, if you want to be a spiritual being, be a spiritual being. Um, Do you believe there's a higher power though? I I I, I think it's it it might be slightly naive to think that all of this is cause of nothing. Okay. Um, it's purely cause of science. I'm still trying to figure out what I am, but I. How old are you? I'm 24. Just hey, turned 24 star. end of last year. Yeah, you're a young. Star. You still gotta have abortions and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, spirituality definitely. Uh, brought up in a Christian home, definitely not Christian. My father was a pastor. My mom, mom fundisi, but. Um, I think I, I, I figured out very early that it's just not for me. But if, if you believe in something, go ahead and do it as long as you don't infringe on other people. Yeah. Slay queens. Slay queens. Don't believe such a thing exists. I think it's a weird thing that men created um, in order to characterize a type of woman um, and also to shame them. I, I, think, I think it could have been a fun thing that we had, but niggas always ruin everything. <laughs> yeah. What are you attracted to? 
What am I attracted to? Like women, like money. What? Oh, <laughs> um, woman. I. <laughs> what kind of woman are you attracted to? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. Spoken like you. a slave queen. <laughs> There we go. You get me. I am. A, I've been telling people I'm a snake and I'm a bad bitch, guys. Um, what kind of woman am I attracted to? I honestly don't know. I honestly, I don't think I have a type, but I think I've, I know easily when somebody's not my type. Yeah. Like as soon as I talk to you, one thing that I thought I would never learn is, no matter how fine somebody is. They can turn you off so quickly, mm. like with with I sound like a whole tape nigga with what's in here. Yeah, but yeah. but for real, just like a conversation with somebody, I've had so many crashes on people where I'm like, yo, I'm here like yo, and then we start talking. I'm just like, um, I don't think like you're you're any like lesser than me, but we just don't gel. Yeah, like it just it's, and it's, it's not happening exactly. You know, so I think. Uh, people that are tra- I think funny, funny, and I think most women are funny, but when. Listen, when somebody's funny, when you can make me laugh, it's late. My girlfriend is the funniest person on earth. Don't ever tell her I said that, but uh, she's do, hilarious. Do, do you have friends that are just friends with you because of the one I get on YouTube? Um, so, so obviously they wouldn't actually be my friends, but I definitely think there are people who've tried to befriend me um, because of status, which is a, it's a weird thing because I don't think I can uh, push up your status <laughs> <laughs> at all. <laughs> wrong person, you're barking up the wrong tree. Uh, future of YouTube, where do you think it's headed? Um, um, I've been thinking about this more and more um, I think it's going in a good place I think we're getting to the point where The more YouTubers the better first yeah, yeah, of course. I want more people to create YouTube channels Because it just makes the industry bigger um, And then also the bigger The bigger the, the community is The better it weeds out people yeah. The people who are just starting And who are going to fail Which is completely fine Sometimes something is not for you um, And the people who are going to carry on with it And take it to the top um, I think we're going to be making more money as the years go. Uh, I think I think now with like becoming celebrities, it's a very weird thing. Um, when people call us celebrities, I I think there's going to be a, a a cultural shift. When right now our celebrities, first our celebrities are presenters, radio presenters, TV presenters, and we fucked it up, radio. And we, Completely messed it up. Um, now, now our presenters are—I mean, our presenters, our celebrities are musicians. Yeah, um, yeah. Our major celebrities are musicians. Now it's becoming uh, online personalities. Are celebrities, without a doubt, in the next two years, there's going to be so many more Michalis. Um, wow. Right now, the major one is Michali. Michali Damase, I'd say, is arguably um, one you of know, our you, biggest internet. You, you actually, you're actually right because I get more recognition. Mm-hmm. From this channel mm-hmm. Than I ever did When I was on radio Exactly It's, it's, it's exactly. weird That's the thing Like people don't So I was like I was like Okay cool Mac G But I was like Where do I know Mac from <laughs> Apart from the channel I know Like I know I knew Like your face yeah. So every time you showed up On my, my board I would like Mac G okay cool But like I know him Further than that I just don't know how yeah. And then I said And it was like radio I'm like that's where I know this nigga yeah. from But I promise you Online is gonna make you Way bigger than radio Ever did the, the, For me it's not about fame Like I, mm. I don't like fame yeah. you know, Give me the money give Show me the, the money That's what I tell people <laughs> Pardon me I tell people that All the time But at the same time I get this question Often where people Go fame or money And I'm like fame Because fame brings money Yeah true So much easier to make money when you're, when you're famous, famous yes. Yeah. Uh, so what I was saying is, keep the fame, right? Mm. So apart from the money that you know you can make in YouTube, mm. what I love about it is that it opens up so many doors. I was actually chatting to Len the other day. I'm like, dude, you know, literally, we could go to Ibiza mm-hmm. and record a podcast with Black Coffee yep. and upload it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we could do this anywhere in the world. Anyway, we're not confined to the space. Yeah, and that is amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. It's just like. There's, there's just so many things you can do with it And like you said, there's no one place you can do it I'm hoping to like plan my first overseas trip That like I'm paying for and everything And and I'm so excited to be able to create content in another country um, And I don't I don't have to struggle with it I just take my camera yeah. that's, my, that's my weapon I take my camera And I know that I can create content wherever I go Exactly like you say Dude, yeah. it's crazy Because yeah. I love radio Love mm-hmm. it to bits Love traveling Yeah oh, exactly. I'd rather travel than buy a car yeah. Mm. Um, Because I'm I'm about like experiences, you know. Hundred percent. And then I just realized we could do both with the channel. You could. I'm like, what the fuck? That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to become. I won't even lie to you. I think I think uh, part of my brand that I haven't really gotten into yet, as hard as I could, is traveling. I want to become a travel YouTuber. It's 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 amazing, dude. That one is where you can enjoy it the most. Yeah. And two, there's a lot of money in travel. Mm. Um, And also like. 
I mean, I love getting paid, but take me to a, a, a place anywhere, even if you don't pay me. Just give hey, me maybe we can collaborate, dude. do podcast and travel. I feel like I feel like <laughs> this needs to happen. This needs to happen. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude, man. Thank you so much for coming through, thank man. You for having it's me. a pleasure to have you, man. I appreciate it. And I love the work you're doing. When it's all said and done, when the cameras are off, mm. what do you want people to remember you as? I do get serious mm. sometimes on mm. the channel. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> Mac just uh, switches up on us. Uh, what What do I want people to to remember? Maybe, yeah. Um, man, just enjoy stuff. I mm. I started YouTube because it pulled me out of my depressive state while I was at varsity. I can't believe you were depressed, dude. I I, I was, and and it's something that I still struggle with to this day. But I I've with hundred k. <laughs> Unfortunately, money doesn't it doesn't fix your brain necessarily, yeah. but it can definitely help the the, the symptoms. Um, so so, I think if there's one thing I want people to remember is that these things are supposed to be enjoyed. Like you're supposed to enjoy creating podcasts, you're supposed to enjoy creating YouTube videos. And when it's not enjoyable anymore, um, don't do it. I I just hope a lot of the things that I learn, a lot of the trial and error, I really don't mind being that person who makes the mistakes for other people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, keep making the mistakes you know, for I, I, I got you guys I don't mind I, I stumble so many people don't realize Like that 200 Who I almost said 200 I made The less than 200,000 That I made There are so many Hundreds that I didn't make yeah. That people said no to They were like Who the hell do you think you are um, And I made mistakes And hopefully I, I hope people uh, Remember me um, as the person who made the mistakes for them And at the same time I hope I don't have to be somebody who's remembered I hope I, I stay in the game for a long time In, in whatever capacity Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to sound insensitive mm -hmm. uh, But when you say uh, when, Talk to me about depression Because I've never been depressed mm -hmm. um, I mean when I get fired I get sad yeah. But yeah. not like I don't get into depression more Because yeah. yeah. like I'll be sad for a day And then I'll be like alright cool what's next I mean I'm glad you know that Because a lot of people will just be like I'm sad, so I'm depressed. Yeah. Um, when it's something further than that, it's it's it's. I, I don't want to sound like I, I I know everything, but it's more of a chemical imbalance in your brain. Wow. Um, it's about your brain. It's an actual illness. Um. Sometimes you're born with it. Sometimes it's triggered by something in your life. And as black people, we're like our son. Exactly. So so for me, um, my my psychologist said, which which is still weird to me to this day, is like, um, she was like. Your, your depression was probably triggered by your father dying very young. I don't even remember that, oh. but she says that stayed with you. And now, like, that, it's not something that mad. Like, I don't think about my father passing away and get sad because I don't, like, remember it. I was yeah. very young. But she says it did something to you where oh. it changed you. Um, and so that stuck with you. So now you're going to have this for the rest of your life and just be like that. Um, and it's just something you're going to have to figure out. I only realized I was depressed in grade 11. I went to go see wow. a psychologist. Um, and I realized that my psychologist was like, yeah, you're depressed with like mild OCD and anxiety. And she said, it's just from your childhood. A lot of people um, become depressed from a very, very young age. People will be surprised that their four-year-olds are depressed. Wow. Um, literally, dude. It's, it's not something that just happens when you're an adult and you're struggling with work or whatever the case may be. It's a, it's a real illness. Um, mm. And you can get just, treated. And, and exactly. You can get treated for it. But right now, there's no, there's no actual cure. The only thing that people can do is change their lifestyle or, or take meds for it. And, and I, I'm one of those people who says take meds. I haven't gone on meds yet because... One, I can't afford it. Um, so for me, it's majorly just lifestyle changes. I have to be very careful about what I do every day. Yeah, Dude, but it must have taken a lot of guts for you to go on a platform such as yours mm, mm. and share that with your people because that's something very personal. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it did. It did, 100%. But there was also... Twitter helped a lot. Mm. People already talk about it on Twitter. So I didn't feel... I mean, definitely I was scared the first time I spoke That's like about me coming it, out and saying I got a small dick. You know what I mean? Hey, man, it be like that. <laughs> or, or your toe is... Or your toe is a little bit strange. And, and it's, sometimes we need to... So I, I think the thing for me... Um, and it's very interesting because it's the same way like Nasty C did his whole yeah. thing. It was, I want to be able to say this so that other people can know that they're not the only person who has it. Because I realized very early that I'm not the only person who's depressed. I'm not the only young black person who's depressed. Um, and I know whenever other people speak up, I'm like, yo, I'm so glad that I'm not the only, body, uh, the only person who goes through this. Mm. So that's why I've made it a thing where I will say um, I'm struggling with depression. Because there's so many times where kids from here, from Vits are like, dude. I dealt with the same thing But I, didn't I thought I was the only person Or I didn't wow. realize That that could have been depression I thought maybe I was just like I was just I was just I don't know I was just sad mm. um, But you can't be sad For two weeks straight dude You can't yeah. You can't be sitting In your raised room For two weeks Not going to lectures And thinking you're just sad That's that's not how it works Yeah So I'll start like A small dick community There we go You know what Please I mean? start a small dick community <laughs> I'm starting a short man community <laughs> 
constantly getting dragged on the TL, so you know what, gents? It's me and you, man. It's me and you. Chubby niggas, short niggas. I got you. I got you. Uh, Simu, thank you so much, Thanks man. Big shout out to you. Uh, check out his many channels. Uh, and yeah, man, anything you want to say in closing? What, what are you working on right mm. now? Um, what am I working on? Uh, no, no big, no big projects. To be honest with you, um, I'm just working on um, like so. Right now, I manage a lot of uh, other YouTubers um, on the low low, but I think that's that's where I'm focusing on is cultivating the. Oh, the can you manage this YouTuber? We have no idea what we're doing. You have bro. no idea what you're doing. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can chat. Maybe we can chat. But the, that, that's the thing. I, I, I think. I think. I have. Re- I don't think I've reached like my peak, but I think I, I've I've come to a place where I'm starting to have this conversation with myself where I'm like, there are people who are going to be bigger YouTubers than you. Yeah. Um. I'd rather cultivate them to make sure that when they become bigger than me, they're much bigger and they're amazing at what they do. I see you as like the black coffee of of of, of YouTube. Well, damn. That's it for the <laughs> podcast. Uh, the Jeepers. Yo, I, I wish, dog. I wish. In I terms wish. of, I promise you. Yeah. In a few years, you probably won't even need to upload your own stuff. Yeah. Like you'll just be managing. Mm. You know. That's so. So that's what I, I. To be honest with you, that's what I want to do. I want to. And people know, okay, mm. if you want your channel to be big, you have to Cebu is the plug. That's exactly what I want to do. Yeah. That's exactly. And and I might just have one channel at that point. Yeah. But I'm managing other people's channel, helping them with their content, helping them find brands. Because that's what a lot of Americans are doing right now. They have yeah. big agencies where they just work with YouTubers. What I'm hoping doesn't happen is that shit in five years, I've created this agency for influencers and then like YouTube is like not a thing anymore. Um, then we start our own YouTube. Then we start our own YouTube, exactly. So, so YouTube. I, 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 to be honest with you, the way things are going now, I, I don't think I'm going to be that YouTuber guy, mm. but I want to be that businessman mm. where people know the business of YouTube, you come to Cebu. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thanks man. Cebu, love you long time. Thanks. Cebu Mpanza out of the building. Boom. Subscribe. To Mac oh, yeah, G's yeah. channel. Oh yeah, I never see you guys shit. see the views. <laughs> Do you guys Mac G has some of the highest numbers on South African YouTube? No cap. <laughs> Subscribe. Get this man's too. How many subscribers are you on now? Uh, I don't know. Like, but if you're black off, you're get, get, get him to 100k. <laughs> get him to 100k. We're going to a million in a couple of years. Just you watch, man. Just straight watch. up, straight <laughs> up. We out of here. Boom. Podcast and chill. Mac G, the Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko.